Hi there. Um, hopefully you just watched recently, or it really helps, but to have watched the video that I have on scatter plots. But if not, that's okay. Um, this video is going to be about linear and nonlinear relationships, lines and curves of best fit, interpolation and extrapolation. And we will explain this to you right now, or maybe it's not really we, it's, it's me. Okay. A linear relation is a relation between two variables that forms a straight line. So the word line means it's going to be a straight line. Um, in this case here we have two variables and wh what they mean by variables here are two things that are related to each other. Um, in this case this this is the people's mark and down here is how many hours they studied and it seems like there is a relationship between these. The more they study the higher the mark they got, okay? And the title here is Hours Studying and Report Card Marks, okay? So the people that put in the work seem to have a benefit from it. There's always those that are not really fitting this mold here, and those are called outliers. But anyway, that was all talked about in the video I have on scatter plots. So what I will do here is just keep going through this. A line of best fit. Well, that's a straight line that passes through or comes close to as many points on a scatter plot as possible of a linear relation. So if I was drawing a scatter plot here, I, I mean, sorry, if I was drawing a line of best fit, I would probably use a ruler. Um, I'm not sure if I have, I mean, I have a opportunity to draw a straight line here, but I would probably start from here. Kind of, this would not be a line of best fit, nor would this. You kind of want to go as good as possible through there, okay? And again, videos that I have on slope, because you can talk about how steep this line is, those are really cool to know if your teacher starts to talk about slope with regards to this line. Um, but in this case here, it's, it's a positive relationship. It means the more hours studied, the higher the mark. And it's positive. It's going upwards like this from left to right. Okay? So let's keep going. Um, a nonlinear relation, in that, in this case, where's my pen here? A nonlinear relation is a situation where the the scatter plot doesn't really it doesn't really follow a straight line. I can't really draw a straight line here that would be the best for this situation. It's almost like this line. I'll try to draw it in red here. It's almost kind of going like this. Would you agree? It's kind of moving like that. So. In that case, it would be called a curve of best fit instead of a line of best fit. And at the bottom, it says, a curve that passes through or comes close to many points on a scatter plot of a nonlinear relation. Remember, nonlinear means not straight line. It does not form a straight line when it's graphed. Okay? So those are just some terms that you're supposed to know. Okay? Let's move on. Does a line of best fit or a curve of best fit or neither apply when you look at the graph below? Okay, so let's look at this graph here. Obviously this one does seem to have a pattern and it looks as though it's going up and then down again. And in the last question we had, we had a situation where someone threw a ball and it went up in the air and it came down again. And generally that takes place. And there are relationships like that and it is a curve of best fit in this case. It's a non-linear relationship. Okay, the next one here. Hmm, this one's arguable. I mean, in my mind, I might think that this is kind of going up in this direction. I don't know if you agree with me or not. You might think no. Maybe there's no relation at all. Um, let me get rid of my line of best fit. So, if you're a student and if you argue your point, I would probably understand. If you said yes, to me it looks like it's going up but it's a very weak um, relationship between the two variables that are whatever that would be on the side here. There may be a very weak relationship between them and they are moving upwards. But you could also tell me there is no relationship here and you could say neither applies. Neither a curve or a line of best fit works. Okay, as long as you argue your point and if I can kind of agree with you on when I look at it, then that's fine. It's kind of like English where sometimes the answer depends on the person and how they see the situation. Sometimes that's the way it is in math too, believe it or not. So you can use a line or curve of best fit to make a prediction or to estimate 
a value on a scatter plot. There are two ways to estimate or estimate. There's something called interpolation. That's when you estimate a value that's between two measurements in a set of data, and I'll show you what that means in a second. And there's something called extrapolation, and extrapol think of the word extra. Extrapolation goes beyond the range of the set of data. So you see a certain trend, but then it goes beyond. Um, so on the last graph here, I don't know, or maybe this one right, let's say this one right here, we could predict if someone had spent, hmm, I guess you can't go beyond 100%, but if someone had spent maybe six or more hours studying, maybe their mark would have been really, really close to 100. If, 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 they, if they asked, what's the chance, what's the chance someone studied two and a half hours? Well, that's called interpolation because it's between these dots, okay? And then you could make a really good guess. They might get around 70-something percent. But extrapolation is when you go beyond. I'll do the extrapolation in blue. It's when you go beyond the dots that you have. And then you say, you make a guess based on how the line seems to be going, okay? You are beyond the dots, either way before or way after the dots. That is called extrapolation. Okay, so hopefully these two words make sense to you. We might use these two words as we look at the next question here. This table that we have here shows the approximate retail price for a four liter, and this is Canada, so we talk about liters here, for a four liter jug of milk in Ontario, which is the, one of the provinces here in Ontario, from 1980 to 2005. Well, I think most of you would agree that milk seems to go up in price over the years. It sure does over here, and I'm sure that's the case for you too. It says graph the data. Draw a line or curve of best fit. So first of all, um, you have to think what is the independent variable and what's the dependent? Well, we know that price depends on time, okay? Time is generally the independent part, okay? And price is dependent. Okay, the dependent part always goes on the y-axis and the independent part always goes on the x-axis here. I just want you to know that if you're confused right now and you're like, what is independent and dependent? Just watch the video that I have on scatter plots. It explains it in more detail, okay? So anyway, the years are independent. So we write them along the bottom and we do our best just to um, here, I'll put a squiggle here because we're going to start with 1980. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3. Hmm, no. I'm trying to spread them apart evenly. I'm just going to guess. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 1985. We've got 1990, 1995, 2000, and 2005. Okay, that is our scale that we've just used. Over here, we have to come up with another scale, and it's going to start around, well, we could start at zero, but maybe let's just put a squiggle and say we'll start at a dollar fifty. I don't know, something close to a dollar. 80 anyway. So let's say $1.50. And should we go up 50 cents each time? Let's see. $1.50. Let's just do some guessing here. $1.50. Then we have $2.00, $2.50, $3.00, $4.00, dollars I think I can squeeze them in. So $2.00, $3.00, $4.00, $5.00. Okay? So there's five dollars, two, three, four. There's our scale, and that is the price, okay? I'm not filling in all the numbers in between right now because I'm trying not to bore you. <laughs> so if you want to fill those all in, you can. But anyway, let's draw, let's graph this data right now. So in 1980, it was a dollar 87. So in 1980, it was a dollar 87. So I put it right there. It's less than two dollars. It doesn't have to be exact here. It's, we're just going to get a general idea. In 1985, it was 285. Hopefully, you're okay with that plotted point going right there. In 1990, it was $3.30. Okay. In 1990, it was $3.30. In 1990, it was 
Okay, right about there. In 95, it was $3.56. Not much more. In 2000, it was 382. And in 2005, it was $4.70. Whoa, it jumped up there a bit. Right about there. Here is our plotted points. Um, in this case, yeah, you could say it looks kind of like a curve, but let's just draw the general t trend. Um, I'll just use a green. It's kind of, and I would just use a ruler here. Hmm, that's not a great line of best fit there, people. Um, I should really use, let's see if I can use this here. Hmm. <laughs> this is a super thick line of best fit, but I am definitely showing you that I'm covering most of the dots by going there. I'm going to call that our line of best fit. It's kind of like an average about how the milk is rising in price. It's kind of scary if you think of how, mil how much milk will be. I'm trying to think how much milk is right now. It's 2020 right now. And, uh, yeah, it's around $5. It is really around $5 right now. Um, according to this graph, it looks like it would have been a lot more expensive by 2020 because this would have kept rising, and we're only at 2005 on our graph. So if I was to interpolate, remember, interpolate means anywhere in here, I could make a good guess. But if I was to extrapolate and go all the way up to 2020, way beyond the graph, way out there, it would be a lot higher than $5. So my guess by extrapolation wouldn't be very accurate. Okay, there's some questions here, and I'm just going to verbally go through them instead of writing them down. Fully describe the relationship between the variables. Well, basically, just explain the relationship. Um, you could say that the price of milk increased over time. Good enough. Estimate the cost of milk for 4 liters of milk in 1998. Did you interpolate or extrapolate? Well, 1998 is right here. So if we were to estimate, if we were to estimate in 1998, we'd say it was somewhere around $4. Okay? So in 1998 it came really close to $4, but we know that it won't quite be there because in 2000 it was 382. So anyway, somewhere less than $4. And that is interpolation, because we were between the points. We were between the plotted points. Estimate what the price of milk would be. How, oh, what year would it be when it reaches $6? Well, $6 is way up here. And so it looks like it would be more like 2000 and maybe 2010 or 2015. Okay, And that is extrapolation, because we went well beyond our plotted points. I hope you guys catch on to what I've been talking about in this video. There's nothing else to talk about really other than uh, everything we've said. And congratulations if you made it this far in the video. Have a great day everyone.